to mind and talk to somebody and, and in our political system, because I'm just this one person who nobody's going to listen to. I want to connect with somebody who can do something or make a phone call or listen to five stories at, you know, from parents in Palo Alto. I don't know. So I think the best way to do it would be to look at where you want the change and being realistic about the timeline. And it depends where you are. So if you are part of a smaller school district, you could probably go to your principal. If you are in a larger one, you should go to your school board. If you are wanting really macro level change and you have the time and the resources, meaning people and money to devote, I will go to your state. The only way education is going to change in this country on a really school by school individual student level is at the state level because we're too decentralized. Most of our funding, it's Mm -hmm. all about money. Yeah. Most of our funding comes from the state and the district level. So that's uh, on average, 90% of our funding comes from that. Only 10% from the Department of Education in DC. So you can go to Washington, you can lobby this, that, and the other thing, and you can have a president, you know, and I always look, I always listen when they have the debates, the presidential debates, how many times education comes up and it's close to zero. I was going to say it doesn't come up. (laughs) It does not come up that often. There was one debate when it did come up, but typically it does not come up. But the reality is there's not much they can do. They can talk about it. They can try a cultural shift, you know, but the reality is it happens at the state level. So I will go to your governor, your governor's office, look at who's, who's uh, running their department of educations and, and work from there and get as much information as possible because we are so different. And if I was to nail one thing that I would change, if there's one thing I could change, it would be, actually, I would, I'd want to say two. I would say, look at your per pupil spending and look at the educational outcome levels at each school and make sure that those schools that are title two schools, meaning those that are getting free and reduced lunch, get much more funding for what they need and make sure, and you got to look right. You have in places like Palo Alto, you have so many boosters clubs, you have educated parents, you have PTAs, you have mm-hmm. pa- um, pa- parents. It, it just, it's, it's, you know, on paper, it may look like, okay, so we're spending, let's say the California average is, I think it's about $11,000 per pupil in Palo Alto. It's well over 20,000 Yeah. When you get all the plus plus pluses, and that don't, that's not even, that's not even talking about what the kids go home to, right? Mm-hmm. To to parents who have masters or PhDs, right? So I would look into the experience of each child in each school in that state, which states are trying to do now. But on top of that, teacher credentialing comes from the state. So you know you could have a certification in New York, but if you want to teach in Texas, you have to go through a different set of credentialing exams. And different states have different requirements, and some are very tough, some are much more lax. I would go and I would make the expectations much higher for our teachers, but that also has to go hand in hand with a full on recruitment effort and pay that is comparable to that that an engineer right out of college mm-hmm. would get. We have to increase the because otherwise we need to get the best and brightest into the totally. teaching profession and we don't. But if you're going to offer them, you know, thirty or forty thousand dollars entry level salary, it's just not an enticing. Why, why would you do mm-hmm. it? And I'm so sick of hearing, oh, they're the easiest jobs; they get summers off. Oh, that's you know? crazy. I sometimes I look at the the amount of effort that comes from the teachers from my children. I'm thinking, do these people ever sleep? Even like. <laughs> It's crazy but the I amount of work. It's, it's great. It's, it's amazing for us, but but I wouldn't give them, them summers off. I would even I would I would even off the I wouldn't give them as much responsibility. People don't realize that that our U.S. teachers spend more time in the classroom than in almost any other country. That was a fascinating read, right? Part. Yeah. And so I would make sure we have enough teachers so that they have enough time for professional development and collaborating with other teachers, and have them work and do professional development over the summer that's required, mm-hmm. and have them lesson plan. Yeah. The system has to be has to be revamped. That's what I would do. It's putting money into equity and in teachers. Taru, thank you so much for sitting with me. This book, I joked in the beginning about how it gave me anxiety, um, <laughs> but I don't want to discourage anybody from reading it because it was a really, really great read. It, I have a bajillion questions and I'll probably go back through it again. So I highly recommend it. The moment I got the book, I spoke with three other women who I didn't even know. I just was one was from a coffee shop. One was, you know, walking down the street 
And I just mentioned what it was about, and all three of them went and bought the book right away. So, oh, I'm so <laughs> not that so I'm a happy. huge influencer, but I definitely no, enjoyed the read, and I'm really grateful for the time that you spent with me. So, for anybody listening, World Class by Taru Clavel. It's a fantastic read, and I will keep recommending it to all of and my people. Please tell them it'll make you. Did it make you laugh? It did make me laugh. Actually, it did. Okay. There were moments in there where I was, uh, again, I was so caught up in the whole tactical, like do this, this, this type of thing, which I love that mm-hmm. I kind of work in that area. But it was quite, uh, it was funny in in places. And also just, I was, it. I felt grateful to be exposed to somebody who went to such great lengths to just do your best for your children. And, and you didn't know what that was going to look like in it, you know, in the end, mm. it seemed like it was a great ride. So well, I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Danielle. Of course.